As long as mankind has existed, people have thrown away stuff. As more and more of us populated the planet, we threw away more stuff. Today, humans generate vast rivers and huge mountains of garbage. But in recent years, we've found ways to draw valuable resources from what we throw away. Resources we can use again and again. It's called recycling. As one of America's largest family-owned waste and recycling companies, Rumpke recycles more than 700 million pounds of glass, paper, aluminum, and other materials from throughout much of Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and West Virginia each year. My family has been involved in, in recycling and, and managing the waste stream for, for generations. By going to work with my dad as a very young child, working on the truck with him, going out with him, seeing the enjoyment that he got it was something that I wanted to be part of. We know we're in a tough business. We know that you know what we do isn't always pretty, but it's necessary, and we want to do the best job we can at handling those materials and, and really be a first-class operation. Rumpke's story dates back to the Great Depression in the early 1930s. Founder William F. Rumpke had a coal delivery service. Customers bartered with whatever they had, including chickens and pigs. This farm right here where we're standing, there was an 80 acre tract where we start dumping here in the beginning. We bought all the existing land around it. Now we got about uh, 1,100 acres here and all. Started out maybe we had a 50, 100 hogs. It grew to 2,000 hogs at one given time. To keep the animals fed, William hired his unemployed nephews to collect garbage from area restaurants. In the 1940s, salvaged metal, scrap rubber, and other materials helped fuel the war effort. Trucks dumped waste into a pit at the Rumpke Farm, where it was loaded onto a conveyor belt. Workers sorted out mainly metals, glass, and rags, then sold the materials for about $40 per ton. Food scraps were fed to the hogs and other livestock. In the 1950s, a new law required food waste to be cooked before it could be fed to livestock. That law changed the course of the Rumpke family business. With his youngest brother, Bernard, as his partner, William decided to sell his livestock and focus on collecting and disposing trash, taking it to the landfill in Colerain Township. Here at Rumpke Sanitary Landfill, we are permitted to take about 10,000 tons of solid waste a day. We're currently taking about 6,000 tons a day. There's only so much waste that you can compact into a, an area that's developed for landfills. So it's very important that we continue to try to reduce the waste that comes into this location so we can make it last longer and we can save that space for those materials where there just isn't a market yet. In 1986, the Rumpke Sanitary Landfill near Cincinnati became one of the first landfills to recover methane and other natural gases generated underground by the decomposition of organic materials. Behind us we have our gas recovery plant. What's happening here is we have a series of pipes and wells that collect that gas. This plant separates the CO2 from the methane and puts the clean methane into the pipeline. Most landfills currently burn their gas off, so they collect it and vent it off and burn it so that it's not going into the atmosphere. Here we're capturing that gas and, and using that gas for beneficial use. There's enough gas produced from this landfill that we can heat 25,000 homes. Rumpke also uses compressed natural gas from its landfill to power dozens of its trucks. Now this is the largest landfill to natural gas project in the world. In the fall of 2013, Rumpke opened a state-of-the-art $32 million MRF, short for Material Recovery Facility in St. Bernard, Ohio, near Cincinnati. For every 10,000 tons of waste that goes to a landfill, you create one job. For every 10,000 tons you can recycle, you create between eight to 10 jobs, and that multiplies itself. You know, we have over 100 employees here in Cincinnati based on recycling materials that were at one time going to the waste stream. What a great story. Today, recycling begins with you at your home or business. Items we accept for recycling are limited to plastic bottles and jugs, cartons with the caps and straws removed, glass bottles and jars of any color, aluminum, steel, and tin cans, and paper, including cardboard, newspaper, office paper, junk mail, phone books, magazines, and clean pizza boxes. 
in the early days, we separated everything at the curb. So all of the two liters went in one section of the truck. All the glass by color went in a different section. The newspaper went in its own section. We don't want people to think it's too difficult to recycle. That's one of the reasons that we implemented single stream recycling to make it easier for our customers. You just you know, put it in the bin all together. You don't have to separate it. The trash goes in one container, recyclables in another. You leave both containers at the curb for Rumpke to collect, and your job is done. The recycling, it, it felt like I'm doing something to preserve something, giving back instead of throwing it all away. A lot of times when I talk to students, we talk about examples. You know, how can you reduce? Have your own reusable water bottle instead of a new one every day, or using a reusable shopping bag when you go to the grocery store. How could you use this for something else? For Rumpke, the process is just beginning. Think of recycling as wading into a never-ending river of recyclables and dividing various materials into separate streams. The idea is to separate each material so it can be compressed into bales and sold. In a modern day material recovery facility, I kind of look at it as like peeling an onion. You have this big conglomeration of material and you're gonna to try to pull off each layer of that material if you're left with nothing but different layers of material in different bunkers. We're kind of disassembling something instead of putting it together. 55 tons of recyclable materials are processed at the MRF every hour. From here, it's sorted into separate streams by a combination of people and technology using a complex system of chutes and conveyors. Sorters are located at various stations throughout the process, each pulling out stuff that either doesn't belong or could gum up the works. Some technology is designed to shake and sift apart specific recyclables from the rest. Other machines, called disc screeners, send the stream of materials over spinning discs that propel larger items, like cardboard sheets, along the line while allowing smaller items, such as plastics, steel, and aluminum cans, to fall through gaps between the discs, down chutes to other conveyor belts. Another machine is the angled sorter, a wide conveyor tipped at an angle and inclined at a sharp upward angle so that three-dimensional items, like water bottles, roll off onto a conveyor below while newspapers continue on to their destination. Other technologies at work in the MRF are an overhead magnet that attracts the metal cans and an eddy current used to separate aluminum cans. The eddy current uses rare earth magnets to repel the aluminum cans, causing them to jump several feet forward while other material falls onto a separate conveyor. Rumpke uses optical scanners to detect newspaper, cartons, plastic water and two liter bottles, along with other plastic containers like milk jugs and laundry detergent bottles. The scanners project a beam of infrared light onto a fast moving conveyor belt and determine what kind of material is passing by. If the item is something the scanner is set to identify, it instantly sends a message to a computer, triggering a quick blast of air to divert the item to another conveyor. Once the recyclables have been separated, they're pressed into bales that can weigh anywhere from 800 pounds for aluminum cans to well over a ton for paper. Bales are loaded onto trucks or railroad cars and shipped to factories to be made into something new. Rumpke ships bales of newspaper, for example, to such faraway destinations as China and India. The great thing about the U.S. is we generate very good quality material and the rest of the world wants it. Glass makes up 15 to 20 percent of what Rumpke collects from its residential customers. We now, in Cincinnati and Columbus, send our broken mixed glass to our state-of-the-art glass recovery facility in Dayton, Ohio. There, it's ground into particles the size of a grain of sand and used to manufacture fiberglass insulation. Optical scanners are also used to sort larger pieces of glass according to color, whether it's clear or amber, to be made into new bottles. Either way, glass can be recycled over and over again. So that's how recycling happens at Rumpke. From the company's earliest days back in the 1930s, Rumpke has always looked for ways to find value in all the stuff you throw away, as well as ways to manage and control the river of garbage, to put less of it in the ground and more of it back to good use. As the world is evolving, um, just as recycling is evolving, there are always new opportunities um, for new areas where we can uh, recycle stuff. Every year, the recycling rates go up and the, and the trash rates come down. I think there will come a day where recycling and waste become similar and even one day that we actually maybe we're recycling more than we throw away. There is more to our day than just what we can take and that we need to give back. 
and that's very, very important, whether it's you know, recycling or thinking about the amount of water that we use or the energy that we use, all of those different things all fit together to make a picture of being responsible in the way you live your life. Yes, I like to think I'm playing a part of that. Recycling is, in some ways, still a frontier, but it's becoming more and more a part of our culture and everyday lives. It's about all of us doing our part. In the end, the story of Rumpke Recycling is about a family with a true sense of purpose and a deep feeling of responsibility to preserve the planet for generations to come. At the same time, it's a story of the pride the Rumpke family and their extended family of 2,000-some employees take in the services they perform and the work they do every day, all year long, in every kind of weather imaginable, as long as we have stuff to throw away.